good morning. I'm up bright and early this morning and thought, what can I do today? Because the days can seem quite long at, the, at this moment in time, you know, with uh, various restrictions and not able to go many places. So this morning, I thought I would pop on here and share with you how I'm using tarot during this time that I'm not just using it for reading for others and doing, say, video readings for people, um, but how I'm using it for myself and for my own personal development. Now, a, an interesting question arose the other night um, when I was having um, a text chat with uh, friends of mine. And it was uh, the question was, well, what is shadow work? So, albeit I felt that I've been doing path work for myself, I thought to myself, well, you know, I, I use the term shadow work, I use the term path work, but what am I actually doing? So this has really culminated, this video has culminated from this conversation and I thought I would share with you exactly what I do, but not just what I do, also how I might see things a little differently from other people or how we might see things the same and um, no one person is right because tarot is individual to us all so let's get on so first of all um i have been doing an awful lot with my tarot um over the last um well particularly the last eight months in lockdown because it's been quite um quite a long time so i've had a lot of time to sort of delve deeper yes there have been days where I thought I'm just shelving the lot for now I'm taking a bit of a break and done other things but path working has been something that has um, really sort of drawn me in has really called to me so to speak and uh, in a way that I can only describe as very positive but before we go down that route let's look at the difference between path working and shadow work and I'm going to be quoting here from um, the uh, uh, GoWithinSpiritual.com, um, uh, which is uh, tells you all about shadow work, and also from um, Pathwork.org, where they give their definitions. So let's look at shadow work. So what do they say? To understand what shadow work is, you must first be conscious of your shadow. So the shadow, according to the Swiss psychiatrist Jung, consists of those parts of ourselves that we choose to repress or hide, okay, that we don't like, that we um, we do that by pushing them down into our unconsciousness during childhood, okay. Several examples for um, shadow aspects of are selfishness, aggressiveness, impulse, aggressive impulses, uh, being self-centered, arrogance, shameful experiences and fears. These aspects lead to a certain type of behaviour, such as criticising someone else that has your flaws, letting people know that you're entitled, judging people unfairly, and always claiming to be the victim. Okay, it's always my fault. You know what I mean. We all know people that can do that. Many negative issues that affect your life can result by keeping your shadow side hidden or locked away and not dealing with it so that it grows and it festers. And things that can be um, appear in your personality because of this are the likes of addiction, uncontrollable anger and rage, social anxieties, um, obsessive compulsive disorders, uh, depression, sexual deviancies, self-sabotage, neuroticism, and limiting your beliefs, not just limiting, but limiting your beliefs in yourself. Saying, oh, well, I wouldn't be able to do that. I can't do that. Why can't you do that? Who told you you can't do that? Is that something that goes right back to childhood that you've buried deep inside? So shadow work is the whole process of exploring this and um, trying to um, get into it, you know, delve deep to try and find that issue that has made you believe that you can't do something that makes you have these sudden rages of outbursts of anger uncontrollable anger and it's trying to um acknowledge your shadow first of all to then embrace and befriend it okay and to bring these aspects uh, to the surface that you can begin to um live authentically you can begin to discover your own inner wisdom and you can gain access to your soul or higher self so that is all shadow work dealing with what has been buried since childhood that creates traits in our personalities and behaviors that really aren't nice traits that shadow work is our sort of 
darker side, okay? So if I get into a sudden rage or anger, why? What has created that rage or anger? You know, sometimes they can be quite unnecessary and um, sort of, wow, things can escalate to, you know, that, and that changed fast. But why? What creates the reactions we have to certain situations and things? And that's, like I say, again, it's shadow work. Dealing with that, finding what causes it and dealing with it embracing it and even some aspects that can be positives you know we can have an anger or rage but regulate it regulate it so it's not explosive you know there are times and we, we have to not have to display anger but it's no harm to display anger you know otherwise if we're always going to be that nice placid person you're going to be a doormat so you could have nice traits where you're very placid and you know people just walk all over you and you know you think well why am i allowing that what are you suppressing that has made you a doormat okay so th all these different things are your shadow work then we've got path work i'm just going to close this door it's just banging the it's a little bit of a dryer so path work now path work the um Pathwork.org website states that um, a, it's a body of practical spiritual wisdom that lays out a step-by-step -step journey into um, personal transformation and wholeness down to the very core of our being, offering guidance and advice for self-development and personal growth. It is a voyage of discovery to the real self through the layers of our defences, denials and fears, which in a way is like pathwork, is like shadow work. We're sort of addressing things in, in, uh, in us. But pathwork, I feel, is looking at also the more positive. You know, you might not have had things that have gone, um, you know, that have been buried since childhood, that there wouldn't be things that, um, you know, like social anxieties, addictions, uncontrollable rage, etc. But you might have, you know, say a lack of confidence. You might have abilities that you didn't know you had because you haven't explored um, all your gifts and talents you might want to try something but have never had the courage or go down you know have a look why do you not say well i'm going to give it a go so i have been using this book a lot during lockdown okay and there are a couple of other books that i'll show you that i've been using i'm not going to read all the blurb on the back because these books i have done reviews on my channel that, that you can go back and have a look at but lisa robinson the path path working the tarot this is a lovely little treasure it has practical um, activities for you to do and it it is it gets you to look at the tarot how we use tarot to help us along our path work okay so when i talk about shadow work and path work they can be dealt with outside of tarot but this is using tarot for shadow and path work okay now i will be perfectly honest with you i have not delved into the world of shadow work as yet um not that i don't want to it's just that at this moment in time i don't feel that there's a need to so i'm looking at path working and seeing how I can build on what I already have and find other gifts and talents I didn't really know I had, you know, or I have an inkling there, but I'm too um, lacking of confidence to let them blossom and grow. So let's have a look. I'm going to give you um, an example here from Lisa Robinson's book in the introduction um, that I really liked. I've, I've highlighted a few um, places here that I want to share with you, okay? So first of all, what I like about this book, it doesn't matter if you're brand new to tarot or if you've been reading tarot for many, many years. It's coming from an angle where we're using tarot possibly quite differently to how we have been brought up to use tarot. When I say brought up, how we have been using it over the last number of years. Or if you're new to tarot, this is also a book that will help you become a lot more familiar with the cards and in a lovely manner as well. So... If you're new to tarot cards, then there's a good chance you're looking for ways to connect with the 78 cards of your deck. If you are already knowledgeable in tarot, perhaps you are looking to deepen your relationship with the cards. Tarot cards themselves can be confusing and overwhelming to novices. Each card is a complex construction of symbols and design features. 
get to tell a very specific story. The version of that story will differ with each deck. And I have examples of that too. Um, each deck creator will tell and retell the story in a unique and different way, emphasising some elements and dismissing others. This means that the deck you hold in your hand right now is telling one version of a tarot story. Regardless of which deck you hold in your hand, you are looking at a unique interpretation of the story. So this is about the decks that we use and um, I have brought out cards as examples as to how I would see them quite differently. And I'll show you those after we've gone through this. Um, and uh, just one word of advice, if you're going to use this book, um, it's ideal to pick a deck that you want to use to do this entire book, to do this course. It's, um, it's, it'll keep it uniform for you. So Pathwork, just like Tarot, is a story that is constantly told over and over again because it keeps changing and evolving. It says we change and evolve, you see. It is walking, it's, it's like, sorry, it is a walking meditation that guides you through the concepts, concerns and philosophies that we all call existence, okay? In chapter two, each card in the Major Arcana has its own pathwork exercises. However, I have set up the exercises differently in the Minor Arcana, the court card sections, and you'll find only one set of pathwork exercises per number or court rank. Um, in the Major Arcana, you have three different pathwork activities to do, exercises to do. Um, chapter one in, um, is an introduction to pathwork and the exact process I have chosen to use in this book, while chapter five wraps everything up and explains how to take this journey into your spreads and the spreads of your tarot clients. And as I have said, it's um, it's gorgeous, do you know? And so it just says here, what is Pathwork? And I'm just going to give you a couple of words here. Pathwork is a journey in that it takes you from one point to another, but it also it's also an active exercise, not a passive practice. This journey can be physical in nature, meaning you literally travel through the steps one at a time, as you will find in some of the exercises in the wondering section of this book. But not everything about pathwork is physically active. Sometimes it is merely a matter of raising your level of awareness about who or what is around you and as you move from one thought, feeling or action to another. For example, you may find yourself standing next to the magician or someone who acts like the magician in your life, only then to find that to find yourself in the company of someone who has similar qualities to the high priestess. You might even find yourself needing to physically walk away through the energy of one of the cards or for something like the five of swords. Walk it off. So you can see there's a lot of different things, you know, let's see the five of swords. If you can feel that energy coming off somebody, we know that the five of swords is, is something of a battle. It's walk away, walk it off, you know, unless it's something you need to really deal with. <laughs> now, I've marked this here because um, the path work that um, Lisa has created, there are three different types. There's intentional, there's intuitive, and then there's wondering. So as I, as I uh, she explains here earlier in the book, that in the major arcanas, there are three exercises and there's the, the exercises come under intentional, intuitive and wondering. And I'm still working on the majors. I haven't got to the minors yet. Let's have a look what the minors say. The minors, let's have a look. I think you pick just one, whether it's wondering, intentional or intuitive. But I'll get there when I get there. <laughs> so that's what I'm working through at the moment. What do I do? I do keep notes. I have books here and these are only a couple of little books that I keep. This one is actually full now of, of my findings. You can see all my notes in here <laughs> to do with my tarot and my analysing of the cards. Here's another one. Whoops, that nearly fell there. Pop that over there. I'm balancing on my keyboard. Here's another book in which I've got a lot to do with tarot. And, uh, well, it's all to do with tarot, really. And it's everything I, all that I do, I just keep notes. I keep them in this, in these little notebooks. And I keep them over in my bureau there so that I can re-refer to them or I can add to them. Sometimes I'm scraping things out or I'm changing wording, that sort of thing. And then I have this one here. This one is one that whenever I go anywhere, this comes with me. 
because also inside one, there's a little tarot section, a little journey um, section too. So we're looking here. This has um, got some of the spreads that I've done. Um, and uh, my, like my welcome to different years, you know, you can use this every year. Um, and uh, an, an analysis of the cards that I've pulled. Um, more spreads that I've created. And then there's more spreads I've created again with an in-depth detail. So this is what I take with me everywhere. Um, I have this book, this section here then, where I use cards that I've... Um, that I don't use. Now this particular deck I purchased to use with, uh, I didn't purchase it to use with this, I used it with this when I found out it wasn't an, a, a genuine copy. So this is the sort of thing I do with those. So in this book here I've taken the, you know, we've got the Fool here and I start off doing an analysis of the Fool. And this is my mini version of my very large one that I'm, I've done in my bureau. Um, I then have another book. This is what this one I like. I love writing with the white pen. And this is explaining all the Lenormand side of things that I've been working on as well. Okay, I also enjoy using this for doodling. So I've given my, uh, and after some of my Lenormand notes there, I've given myself permission to take a break and do some doodling. So that comes with me. Um, this is my journey one. So places I've been. I pop in photographs and I pop in tickets that we've been, you know, so where, wherever I've been, etc. Um, this next section here I have, what do I have in this next section here? Again, oh sorry, this is um, that same book. These are little pockets in which I keep tickets, but I also keep tarot cards. And I did an exercise where I created my own two... Um, two tarot cards I took two and I just it was putting any extras I wanted to that I would like to see in a tarot card so for instance I created my own fool and there we've got time we've got music we've got marching to the sound of your own drum you know we've got the the butterfly here and we're sort of going from a chrysalis to a butterfly stepping out of our our um, comfort zone going on our own journey and then we have my magician where if you look there, we've got a butterfly wing. We're still marching to the beat of our own drum and we're morphing more and more into that beautiful butterfly, you know. So those are things that I have done in my own practice here with tarot. And then in my last book, I have, I mix up essential oils and those that I like, <laughs> I write down what I've mixed up, what I've put into them. So I've included this as all part of path work to a degree because I'm going further into tarot, what I want out of it, what I get out of it, what not just what I want, but what I'm growing into and how everything's evolving and changing and finding different things in tarot that I enjoy through investigating, through experimenting and through applying myself to them. Two other books that I'm using in the path working is the Mindful Tarot and the Tarot for Yourself. Now, the Mindful Tarot is by Lisa Frinkle Tishman and then the Tarot for Yourself by Mary Kay Greer. And activities that I like, that all three books in their own individual way have them. It's like stepping into a tarot card, stepping into a tarot card and looking and seeing what's in there. You can combine two tarot cards that the horizon joins together and you are looking at different characters. Speak to them. What are they telling you? What's around you? What are the feelings are you getting from being inside that card? And it um, deepens your knowledge of tarot. It deepens your understanding. You're using your initiative more. The activities in them for the pathwork exercises are creating um, uh, more ways to look at things. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, it's very relaxing too and a, a good use of my own personal time and also it's ensuring as well that my tarot decks aren't just being ignored and left on a shelf during lockdown because we don't read so much for us, uh, uh, people we haven't got people coming for readings because we can't but we might be doing things online and things can get a bit stayed so it's well how can I use my decks and this is brilliant just so much different things to do but path working takes you down the road of looking into yourself. And then you've got the extra activities of whether it's whether you want to call it journaling, being creative, just having your own personal book to carry around with your own notes and whether they're bullet points, whether you've written them out, whether you're drawing um, and whether you're creating whatever it is you're doing, 
just deepening your love and knowledge and understanding and intuition working with the tarot and this book really does help with that as do the other two as do the other two and what i like about the mary Kay green there you get your personality card your card of the year your birth card etc etc you go right through it and then you can see again go into them study them and see how they apply to your life now one of my cards is the tower and i think I, you know, you think, you know, how can you see the Tower card as a positive card? Well, the Tower, for me, um, is a fairly positive card because it, I know that whenever I fall, I'm going to get back up again. And there have been so many Tower times in my life uh, for one person. <laughs> I think that um, it's it's really it really does fit in with, with how my life has gone, <laughs> you know, that um, there, there have been accidents, there have been... Um, issues right through right, right through from the minute I left home really <laughs> that you just think my god how many more things can go wrong and uh, then you think well is it surprising the tower card is your life card Elaine good luck <laughs> at least you're getting a heads up and I can plan in advance <laughs> right now let's have a look what I'm I've picked out strength okay strength in the major arcana here and the reason i've picked that out is because i've chosen some cards to share with you and to sh show you how i in a way how i read them obviously how you read a card depends on the energy you're getting from your seeker it depends how much you're getting um you know uh how you can interpret a card depending on the situation that you're finding yourself in with the, the seeker that's come for a reading now i've picked out two of my favorite cards from the major arcana i have four four of my major favorites there's the fool i love the fool i love the high priestess i love the hermit and i love the strength card so i've got with me today the fool and the strength and i've taken them from this is from the lonely dreamer this is from the this might hurt this is from the fantastic menagerie and this is from the light seers so let's have a look at these four now before we go into looking at the activity you know as lisa said earlier on in the book tarot is a story that's retold and retold from the from the um angle of the creators okay now the creators have retold the story and put their spin on it or well, not their spin but put their intuitive um work on it and what do you take from the art they've created well i'm looking at four different strength cards here and this one here let me just move those books they're about to topple whoops this one here is from the lonely dreamer okay this card when i look at this strength card because of the coloration in it, we've got reds. And reds to me, I when I'm angry, I see red. Okay, When I'm trying to keep a lid on what could turn out to be a volcanic eruption, it's, it's red. The volcanic eruption is red. So to me, when I see that as a strength card, that is me being given the heads up is that, look, You've got this anger. Something has really angered you. Something has upset you. But you have the strength and determination to keep it under control. You have the ability to keep it under control. And don't forget that because there are times I can let loose and lose control. Hmm. Maybe that's where I need to get in touch with my shadow work. But this is telling me don't lose that control. You have the inner strength to deal with whatever's causing you anger, with whatever's causing you upset. And that, to me, is coming from an angle where um, you have got to a point with a situation or a person where you just want to explode. And that is saying, don't be so silly, Elaine. Stop. You've got the strength to control this. Put a lid on it. Why are you getting so angry about it? So I suppose, in a way, that's dealing with part of my shadow work, but what am I doing? I'm putting a lid on it and I'm suffocating it again. So I need to now pop over to shadow work and find out what made me so angry. So be it that this might be something that I come across on my path work, it's giving me, make a side note, Elaine, and deal with whatever is creating that anger and why you get so angry. So that's a point that I need to remember. When I look at this strength card, 
This is from the This Might Hurt Tarot. This strength card says to me, do you know something? Step back. Take, you have the strength and the bravery to say, no, I'm not getting involved here. I'm stepping back and I'm going to chillax. I'm going to make those flower garlands. I'm going to make that crown of flowers. I'm going to do something creative. I'm going to use my inner abilities as a strength to create something new for me. I'm going to back away from you can see something brewing in the foreground. You can see it coming and you might be involved with a group of people. You might be involved in a situation in work or wherever you might be in your family life. People might be going, oh, come on, we'll do this, we'll do this. Or, oh, I don't like what so-and-so is doing. Let's all gang together. This is having the bravery to say, no, sorry, not my monkeys, not my circus. I am not getting involved. I'm taking time out. And you have the strength to stand back as an individual or to even lead the peace. You have the strength to put your voice forward to say, this is not good, this is not right, or you are, this is the way to go, or that's the way to do it. And you have the strength to be that individual, wear those flowers, make your garlands, find what gives you peace. You have the strength to be an individual, not a sheeple, okay? Then we have the strength card from the, um, uh, um, the light seers tarot and what i i love about this because we have we have the lamb here okay what's here and here we see our inner strength coming to the fore now what this i see from this that people might see us as this beautiful little lamb this is this might be the persona that they uh, the, the, the sort of attributes this gentle lamb um quiet individual nice and, and girly and letting the wind blow through your hair pretty much carefree and they might think oh yeah a little bit of a soft touch a bit of a lamb don't worry until they hit the flick the bitch switch and out comes your inner strength your lioness until someone does something that is overstepping the mark that is an imposition that might be hurting others um, in your circle, your family or your friends, and you have no hesitation to, than, other than to be able to stand up, be counted and say, I'm here, that's not going to happen. I'm strong. I can deal with this. I'm not the quiet little lamb you all thought I was. I do have that inner strength that will get me through the different things that occur in life. And then we've got the strength card from the Fantastic Menagerie. And this one sort of gives me something completely different again we have our little ant there who's wielding that club and who's saying i've got the strength to do this job yet he's it looks like he might have knocked the lion unconscious okay this little ant is facing um a, a major foe or a major crisis or this is sort of indicating that you might feel that there's a crisis in front of you. You don't know if you've got the strength. That this is bigger than you. This is this is um, something that could topple you. But you have the strength to wield your sword, wield your baton, and get yourself out of whatever situation you might find yourself in. That you might think, Do you know, things are too big for me now. Things are getting on top of me. I just can't deal with this anymore. Dig that little bit deeper. And then look at that little ant and say, do you know what? Of course I've got the strength. You also might find that you are, you could be in a situation where th this scenario could be a case of, you know, you could be in a workplace and a task could be set. And you might find that people who could be your supervisors, your bosses, who have been in a job or a situation longer than you have, yet they haven't got the strength, the courage, the common sense the um, ability to think laterally or to think com in, in a, any complex manner in order to deal with the job. And then you might be new to the job and you might say, well, hold on a second, I've got this idea. And that's not a problem. What might be a problem to those that are so bigger than you is actually something that could be quite simple for you and saying, yeah, this is it. And in a flash, you have whatever it was that they wanted doing done. So it's showing strengths in all different ways strengths to deal with different things in life different situations different scenarios again what i've just put said there is how i have read 
these four cards, not red, but the energy I'm getting from them, the feelings I'm getting from them. People might get something completely different. That's good too. That's brilliant because you're using your intuition. But all this about strength from these four particular cards, they're looking at strength from different aspects. And um, I actually find that brilliant because it's all the same story, but being retold. Okay. The other card I looked at was the Fool. And again, look here at the different Fools we've got. This is this is lovely. This is just amazing. You know, we've all got our, our, our this one to me is, is someone who's broken free from a situation and is now finding freedom and is now saying, do you know what? Let that wind blow through my hair. I'm no longer being held back by rules and responsibilities that really didn't suit me or weren't mine to carry or just no longer fit the person I am. And I'm finding out the me. And I think this also comes with a lot of spirituality. We've got our crystal grids. She's holding the crystal there and leaning into the wind and saying, I'm finding the new me. And that is beautiful. This fella here is saying, do you know what? My God, I've served my time. I don't want to do this anymore. And I'm going on a journey. I'm taking time out. I'm going to find out what's new for me. Because once again, this isn't a young person setting out. This is somebody that's had a change of mind and said, do you know something? Yep, it could be somebody reaching retirement and saying, well, do you know what? I'm not old enough to be put out to pasture yet. I'm still young enough in heart and mind. And I am taking this time out to discover what is new out there that I've overlooked for the previous years of my life. And there's his little companion going on, going with him. This one here again, it's a very, so it's, it's, it's very much our RWS as, as they all are. But this one here is like, do you know what? I don't care. I'm young, I'm able, and I'm going to do things my way, my life, my way. And we'll see what happens in the process. This one here, we have our cloaked person here. And I like the fact that it's cloaked because we can put ourselves there. There's no face on it. There's no there's no characteristics that we can actually pick out and say, oh, yeah, that's so and so. That's this. That's the other. That can be anybody. But if that's us, we're looking we're looking forward there. We've got the that white, the innocence, the the newness stepping into um, a new life, a new path doing something different for you but we've got the shadow behind that and those are sort of hurdles that are going to come to us that we haven't quite seen so then we're sort of looking we're flying off like this this new butterfly we've come from we can almost say like a chrysalis almost you know because this masked figure does look a little bit like a chrysalis but it's sort of we're blossoming we're growing we're going to just be as carefree as that butterfly that's our little companion peace harmony carefree it's heading out not actually seeing the hurdles that are ahead of us that are yet to be revealed but as we journey on that's when we come to our magician who tells us we have all the tr the tools of the trade in here to deal with what comes ahead so that's the different fools i didn't want to go on too too long there because i'm rambling a lot so <laughs> what can we expect when we're looking at activities with this so i i thought i'd go with the strength and give you an example of what is um, uh, of the activities that you can do with this um, book on path working. So strength, this card could very well be called courage for strength and courage seem to be the only separate, uh, only separated by the slightest of degrees. Just like courage, strength comes in uh, varied forms and mean different things, depending on the context in which it is being used which we have seen there, the context that's being used. And we've had four sort of different examples there of the different contexts that strength can be used in. Strength could be physical, emotional, intellectual or spiritual. Again, all things that we've, we've looked at there. It could also be compassion and kindness, exactly, which are other elements of courage. We all require different facets of strength depending on the challenges we face, what problems we wish to solve or what new and scary dream we wish to pursue. And of course, where there is strength, courage and compassion, there will be fear, doubt and anger. If it, um, it is as if one cannot get to strength without first having to walk through one of its opposing gatekeepers. They are, for the most part, mutual, um, mutual allies, even though it may not seem that way initially. Often we don't even know how strong, courageous 
or compassionate we are until we come face to face with our darkest fears or our most dreaded circumstances. Perhaps this is why the strength card comes right after the chariot and after we experience our first real life challenge within the journey of the Mage Arcana. It goes on to say how, um, you know, the obstacles and challenges that we could face, etc. Okay. And um, how we will forge ahead and shape the person we're supposed to be. So the pathwork for this one, we have our intentional route. So go ahead and pull the strength card from your deck and lay it down face up in front of you. Keep the remainder of the deck in your hand and shuffle it gently as you ask the strength card a question. Your question could be this. How might I best use you today? So once you have asked your question and feel you have shuffled your cards enough, hold the deck close to your chest and between your closed palms, fingers pointing up. Take three nice deep breaths and then open your hands and split your deck. The card that is on top of the card that is on top and facing you is the answer to your question. Place it down next to the strength card. These two cards will be your guiding energy today. Keep them somewhere that you can see them as you move about your day. Maybe even take a picture of them and make them the lock screen on your phone if you have to work or travel and can't take your deck with you. Each time you see these two cards, remember that the card that answered your question is the path to service today. So, if we were to take our strength card and then pull the fool. So our strength is, you know, to follow a path for you. Have that self-belief. Have that, um, that courage to take the steps that you need to create something new for you. To follow your own path, your individual path. The path that is going to bring you to a life that you want. Okay. Intuitive. The strength card and the animal totem tarot was created. Sorry, the strength card in the animal totem tarot was created to show what happens when strength is seen as a burden. The ox is strong, but the strength is used not for himself, but in servitude to others. This idea that strength itself is not something favourable may seem to go against the grain of how most people think, as we often believe that courage, fortitude and might are positive traits. But how many times have your gifts been a burden? This burden is exactly what we are going to meditate on today. Take some nice deep breaths and bring to mind the last time someone asked you to use your gift or your strength in a way that felt heavy or uncomfortable to you. Bring it to your mind's eye and see it in full colour. Take another nice deep breath and simply observe the feelings that come up as you watch the scene over and over again in your mind. Don't make any judgments, just let the movie play along. Take another nice deep breath and now repeat this mantra. My gift is not a burden and I am sorry for making it feel unloved. I love it and I am grateful I have it in my life. Again, do not force anything. Just keep breathing and reciting your mantra. If it feels more comfortable to close your eyes, please do. Continue with this meditation and mantra until you feel complete. Take another nice deep breath and ground your energy back into your body and the room you find yourself in. If you want to explore this deeper, pick up your journal and write your feelings in it. If not, just know you've shifted a lot of energy in that small meditation and it will make you stronger and more confident moving forward. And what I do, if I want to hear that meditation, if I want to use, keep my eyes closed and not have to read, I record it on the voice recorder of my phone and play it back to myself so I can listen and meditate with it and, and use what I'm getting. And again, I journal about it. And then you have the last part of the path working. The third exercise is the wondering section. How often do you think about this card in reverse or upside down? There is something very liberating about starting your quest for strength backwards. In other words, take time to lean into all of the excuses, all of the fears, all of the doubts that stop you from doing things you claim you want to do. Humans are highly creative beings and the number of excuses we make or reasons we give on a daily basis is quite staggering. Oh my God, I am so guilty of that. Today, stop and pay attention. Every time you hear yourself say, I can't, for all the core, I can't, for at the core of all these I can't statements are two very powerful emotions, fear and doubt. These emotions tell a story. Every time you find yourself saying no to something, it's your upside down strength card story playing out. Each time you listen to your story, ask yourself 
if what you are listening to is based on fact and if you have any real evidence that the story has merit. This exercise is not so much about facing your fears or even overcoming them. It is more about seeing them for what they are. A story you have created to stop you from moving out of your current situation. So now you can see what path working is and now you can see it's actually quite exciting. It is getting you to address many aspects of how you view things, how you view yourself, how you view your um, gifts and talents, how you view your own, your own being. And do you know something? It's actually so enlightening. It really is. So from my conversation I had with my friend the other day, what's shadow work and, and equally what is path work? Path work is what I'm focusing on. And uh, it's something that has... Um, made me use tarot in a completely different light. Yes, I'm a tarot collector. Yes, I read tarot for myself and others. And this last year, I have found that I am using tarot to enhance my life in general. Um, I am here each day um, and I'm retired. And so I take out my tarot decks and I do delve deeper. And I actually find that I feel I'm a nicer person for it. So that's more or less what I have to say today. I'm using just one quick thing before I go. I ordered this quite a, a sort of when it came out last year so that I had it for this year. And I'm a devil for starting off diaries and not, I, I might fill them in for the month of January or on the rare occasion up to March before they're put to one side and I get fed up and I, I get bored with them. So I stopped buying diaries and I started buying blank journals that don't have to be done by date. That you can put what you want into them when you feel like it. But this one here, I thought, right, I'm going to use this. I like this. It's got lots of different things in that appeal to me. It's got recipes in. It's got little things on how to make different witchy bits. And I find it enjoyable. But then I thought, well, if you know something, I, I left it in my desk. It was mid-January when I remember I had it there. Um, there's a lot to read in the front of it, which is quite enjoyable and interesting. Um, and also, you know, how to, what I liked about it is how to make this book sort of yours, how to put your mark on it using the, the little spells and things and what have you. But I then found that this book needs to be used in a much more positive way for me, not just jotting down appointments. I've got um, Reiki treatment here, birthdays there, anniversaries there. It's to be used in a more constructive manner and this is where I'm using I'm currently doing an online course on scrying and this is my notebook and I find that although I've got stuff down in dates in it I also find that it's proving to be great because things that I've got in here that's already come pre-printed in here I'm now finding oh I'm sticking my notes in I'm printing stuff off and it's become a work a work in progress <laughs> so that's another one of the things I've got on the go at the moment Right, folks, that's me. That's how I'm using my tarot. I hope this has helped you. I hope it's um, answered things um, that, you know, like I know people have, have asked me what is shadow work, what is path work. Uh, I hope I've answered those questions and um, I hope you have a lovely day. So whatever it is you're doing, I hope that you now have been encouraged to use tarot for you, for your own enjoyment and to discover who you are. Take care. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye now.